Madhouse Podcasting Network. All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Hard Podcast. Feels good to be back in the seat doing interviews again. Today, I got another very special one with me. Um, referred to by our good friend, uh, Scott Dieterman, who has been on the podcast many times, been a helping hand behind the scenes and stuff. This is Jeremy. Uh, from what I understand, did Scott also train you as well coming into that world or no? I don't want to give him that credit, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he, he deserves way too much credit. <laughs> Uh, he's one of the OGs over at Not Scary Farm. He he was with uh, Scott when they, uh, you know when when they were doing uh, setting the bar for what we see today, man. Because uh, you know a lot of those a lot of the back in the day stuff right there is what literally you see a lot today, and you're seeing overseas, and you're seeing in different states. It's it's really gone. It's really gone global. Like, is that shocking when you think about that? Yeah, yeah. Like every now and then I'll get a video of somebody in Japan doing sliding and you know with the gloves that we were making and it's just like it's so crazy to, to know that they're on the other side of the world and right. you know i'm looking at a pair at my house it's like man these guys are wearing the same gloves so yeah it blows me away uh let's take it back let's take it back a little bit man uh when did you first know you wanted to get into the scaring industry man when did you know you wanted to be a scare actor i fell into it by accident total accident I've always been a Halloween fan, but, um, and I always went to Not Scary Farm, but I never thought of even working there. I was living in Hollywood um, and I needed a job. Well, actually take it back. I applied for Not Scary Farm um, before I moved to Hollywood. And then while I was in Hollywood, they called me. They're like, hey, we want to offer you a job. So I was like, okay. So I went down for the interview. Long story short, they're like, okay, well, you're going to be a wretched warrior and blah, blah. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what the heck is that? And there was no audition or anything. And um, they explained to me, they're like, oh, we want you to work for not, you know, the, the scary farm. We want you to be a monster. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's, let's try it out. You yeah. know, so I got put into the underground as a wretched warrior two or something. And, um, but they actually put me on as a, a backup. Okay. So I didn't work the first weekend. Right. Um, and then they called me the second weekend and I was just in love. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once you get that hot bug in you, it's just, it's hard to get rid of, man. Cause it's, it's a, it's an addicting, it's an addicting thing, man. It's fun. Yeah. It's so crazy. Cause my first year of that, that year, I was a completely different person. Right. Um, I was a total Bible thumper. Um, I went to church. I read my Bible every day. I did Bible study. I, it, I was a completely different per person. I was going on a completely different path um and then that first year i was that person so i experienced scaring people in in that fashion which right. was completely different from the next year which i actually got streets um and you know that actually was a whole accident as well because i never got a rehire card right um so when i went when i got put on streets i wasn't that person anymore i was the person who I am now, which is just evil. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was a completely different experience because I just like, I took out so much aggression, you know, yeah. so much, you know, but I, and I followed the rules, you know, <laughs> when I was in the maze, I literally followed rules. They were like, don't move from this spot and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. So I was in this little box just going, boo, you know, boo. Yeah. And I was getting a couple of the other monsters that were telling me, man, come down here and scare. And I was watching them have all this fun. I'm like, so my last weekend is when I was like, all right, it's my last weekend. I'm going to go, it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I did that and I was like, oh, this is rad. And then the following year came, I didn't get any like rehire or anything. I didn't even like really befriend anybody. Right. Because again, like everyone I talked to, I tried to like pull into this, you know, church thing. Uh, so I called Knotts and I was like, you know, Hey, are you guys hiring for the scary farm? And they're like, yeah, we're going to have auditions. Why don't you come audition? So I did. And, um, I ended up auditioning and getting streets streets, man. I mean, that's, I think everyone that I've talked to is that's one of their main goals is to eventually get on the streets, man, to, to make a yeah. name for themselves, to, to create a character that will go on 
to be remembered for years to come, as well as a lot of many characters that have been, you know, gone and come and, and keep going. Some of them even kept, got passed down to other people. Yeah. Um, and it's cool to see that history of Not Scary Farm to keep continuing year after year. The, you know, the history getting longer and longer as we're approaching the 50th anniversary of the event. Um, what was it like oh, going from transitioning to a maze onto streets now? Uh, it was uh, very different, clearly. Um, it was open rain. I still had that mentality of like, okay, I need to stick to my zone. Right. You know, they were like, okay, try to, you know, hang here, try to hang here. And then you have like, you know, my first weekend, um, I ended up befriending um, a guy I, I auditioned with. Uh, his name is Chris Mendez, who became my partner for five years, um, which we will get into that. Um, and the first weekend, he and I were just like, what are we going to do? Well, before when we went to orientation, um, they had, were talking to us about like, if you guys plan on sliding, you go talk to these guys over here, which was Scott and, you know, all the veterans that were there at that time. Right. And so we did, we went after the orientation, we went and they were over there hanging at the, um, over there by the hanging where they were rehearsing. Right. And they were like, go talk to these guys. And like 15 people went over and started talking to them. And, you know, we stood there and you know, Chris and I were kind of just in the background. We're like, oh, this is cool, but I don't really want to like, I don't want to slide if everybody's doing it. Right. You know, because they kind of wanted, you know, he and I wanted to create our own little thing. So we, you know, we were like, oh, this is cool, you know, whatever. And we kind of walked away. And the first weekend we didn't slide. Right. But Scott and um, another monster, uh, Trish, came up to us and like, hey, how come you guys didn't want, you know, how come you're not sliding? We're like, because we don't want to do whatever. All these other guys are doing it. And they're like, yeah, but they're not doing it correctly. We think you guys will be great. So long story short, they put us under their wing and, you know, we, we started sliding. Right. So it was just, you know, having that free reign was just amazing. You know? right. and, and we know, uh, obviously, um, with Scott and, and his pyro character, obviously, that's that was something that became iconic. Obviously, we, we see more uh, of characters uh, go into these, like I, like I mentioned, that become iconic. What was one, what was the character they first gave you going in? And how did you, how did you go from there? How did you transform it? How did you change it? Did you get something new later on? My first character was, um, I brought my own mask. I bought, okay. we, Chris and I, right off the bat, we're like, we want to be twins. Right. Let's do this twins thing. And um, we ended up becoming the, what they were calling us the bone brothers. So we were both skeletons, identical, same costume, everything. He was just taller. Right. Um, and so we got this, uh, ske the skeleton mask from uh, the studio Zargon masks. I can't remember the name of it. Um, very, very, they've been around, obviously, that was back in 96. Right. Um, so it's a long time. And um, so I, we became that and just kind of developed throughout the year. Um, this is the first season we developed that character. Um, so they didn't really pinch and hold us to, oh, you got to be this person. They were really cool about letting us just be inspired by whatever inspired us at that time and go have fun. Just make sure you don't kill anybody, basically, is what <laughs> yeah. the rules were, you know. And then we got help from all the other veterans and, you know, and stuff. And we really looked up to those guys because they had been around for years. Like, they used to scare me when I'd go. So right. it's like we, we, you know, we knew who they were. And we were like, all right, we're going to follow these guys, the lead of these guys, and just let them kind of uh, mold us into what we could be. Right. And, and that's, what, that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, Ghost Town, obviously – is the scare zone at knots that mm -hmm. re re continues to come back year after year. Obviously it's the, the biggest one I think out there. And even from other people who talk about it, you know, ghost town, it, it, it's made its name. It's, it's concreted into the event. It's never not going to be at the event. Ghost town is what it is because of the history it has with people coming in and out characters coming in and out. Um, what was, what would you say the, the, the most fun you had, uh, doing this character, uh, you know, obviously you have the twin kind of thing going on, and that's usually a, a fun scare tactic to work with the audience and, and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the guests. So what did you say the funnest you had uh, doing that with your partner, like as far as scare-wise goes and whatnot? We kind of played the goofy role, right. really. Like we weren't comic, comical. Um, it just kind of came off that way. 
but he and I really kind of had this, you know, little brother, big brother, brother thing going, and we would kind of just mess with each other. Right. And people would get so, you know, they would just get so focused on, oh my gosh, these guys are like picking on each other or they're fighting or they're wrestling, or yeah. we would take those, those, um, those air, you know, uh, hammers and beat each other like to a pulp. <laughs> And then we would, you know, it went, okay, obviously when we weren't sliding, um, this is what we would do just to kind of pass the time and to change it up a little bit. And, and then whenever we get a big crowd, we would just, just scatter and just go after them. We chase people out of that crowd and, you know, or I'd goof off with him and then I'd go and scare a group. Um, it, it was just very, uh, it was just very natural and organic uh, uh, at that moment. We never really planned anything. And then when we were sliding, we would uh, use each other as decoys. He would go out and act like he's drunk or act goofy or you know pick on certain people, and then I would go and nail and vice versa. Yeah. So he he and I had like just the best you know team uh, <laughs> right off the bat, um, and we just had so much fun. Those were my best years was with him for the the first five years, right. you know. And, uh, you know, he became cool and became a blue man, whatever, <laughs> you know, uh, leaves knots for a blue man group. whatever. <laughs> um, oh, man. Yes. That's, that's, I mean, I, I, for one, love that kind of chemistry when, when you can take a partner and really go out there and just kind of feed off the audience and feed off everything and, and just and roll with it. I mean, I think it really good makes a good, uh, a really fun time, especially when it's more like a lot of interaction and stuff where, you know, they're interacting with you and then boom, you get the scare, get out and go. And kind of like, you're just kind of standing there afterwards. Like what just happened? Like the guests right. are confused. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. I, I love that so much. <clears throat> yeah. Especially when like, cause we realized doing that kind of stuff, you build a crowd. People just sit on the, on the, the, rocks and just watch you for hours right. and it was like you know what like we're gonna kind of treat it as like this area right now is our stage and we're gonna just improv and just goof off and especially when we're tired we're just gonna mess around play with each other play with the guests we would take people's funnel cakes and go and give it to other people we would <laughs> if we, people would come by and with like um uh in uh wheelchairs we would grab onto the back of the wheelchair and just let them pull us around and, <laughs> stupid stupid stuff but it was so much fun right. half the time we didn't really even scare we were just you know it was late in the evening we had our last like after the last uh, pre-show that last hour and a half two hours it was strictly just improving and goofing off right. you know because we got all of our sliding out at the pre-show that's our that was our sliding and demos and our sliding entertainment and then right. we get our scares in the very beginning we have all of our energy you know, and then it would kind of die out throughout the night. And yeah. then, you know, and then once that, that last session, we were just like, let's just chill, goof off and have fun. It's mostly, it's mostly that, that trying to stay awake to the last couple hours where it's just yeah. like, what can we do to entertain? Was there ever a, a, a little competition to see who can top the other in something of like either scares or comedy? No, no, because no. Cause we knew our place as, as a part of the team. Uh, he and I never tried to top each other, except for when it came to picking up chicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, so that was always our thing. We're like, all right, how many numbers did you get tonight? How many numbers did you get? And that was the only quote unquote competition because right. we needed something, you know, but he and I never competed when it came to the best, who was a better monster or who was a better spider. It was always, you know, hey, uh, you know, I, I learned this trick you know, that you learn it, that way we can figure out how to do something with it together. Do it and, and get it good. Yeah. Yeah. So there was never competitions back then. It was never, I'm better than you. There was never drama. Well, you know, there was drama, but it was never about who was the best monster, who was the most energetic and right. who was the better slider. It was never like that. It was like, Oh, oh my God, Scott just jumped nine people. All right. Let me see if I could do that too. Yeah. And if you don't do it, Scott's like, Oh, here, I teach you how to do this. It was always, it was always backing each other up. Yeah, because so. I I think the the thing about that, you, just hearing that is, it's not about who can be better than everyone else. It's about let's all be better together. That way we can yeah. put on a damn good show. Exactly. And yeah. and I love that so much because you don't really see a lot of that today. It seems like a, a lot of people nowadays, um, I wouldn't say try to be each other, but like there there's someone that wants to do something and then you know up someone, but. I, I really do enjoy the, the moments that you see where everyone wants to just be better together. 
and, right. and they will do what they have to do to 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 teach one another to 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 do that and and to, to just be the best together because honestly like i said it, it, it is what puts on a really good show in the end of the day right. uh you want the audience walking out remembering like oh wow that i remember that person did that to you know to scare me and stuff or i remember when this monster scared me doing that you know you want people to tell those stories and and to go on for like the next couple of years to, you know, yeah. telling your name and, and everything and kind of passing down to their kids and whatnot. And so right. when they go with their, to the, to the event today, they're like, Oh, I remember when so-and-so did this. Um, it, it's stories like that where, you know, as I do this show, I, I get to hear a lot of those from back in the day to today and, and just kind of hear different perspectives. And I, that's why I like seeing it. What do you think the biggest thing, obviously uh, over the years, not just changed so much from <laughs> the style and everything. What's, what's the, what's something big that you've noticed that's changed since you started scaring there till today? The rules. The rules. Unfortunately, I get, I get why they're there. Right. Um, a lot of them I 100% don't agree, agree with, especially I got, I, I got the opportunity to go back in 2015 and experience it. Um, and granted I was older and tired, um, but it was definitely like a, a, a totally different vibe. Right. Um, it's, you know, we were, it was still fun. The scaring aspect was good, but it was just like you, when they tell you, don't do this, don't do that. You can't chase, you can't do this. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, I can't chase somebody. Like, I don't understand that. So that's, that to me is the biggest, the biggest change is just the rules. And you can see it, you know, when you go to, when you went through Fog Alley, uh, you know back in the day man you you don't know if you're going to get ran into you don't know like you, you can just stand there for a good half hour and you're probably going to see a monster chasing somebody uh, in circles right. like that's what we used to do we would literally would chase somebody from the entrance all the way to boardwalk wow. non-stop yeah yeah so we would you know as horrible as this is going to be this is going to make a sound but if we used to do it if kids were like, or just people in general were petrified, and I'm talking petrified, we would dig in, dig in, dig in, you know, and it was just because like our mentality back then was like, well, you paid for the ticket, you know what you got into. No, and that's exactly what it's like today. I think there's always an ongoing argument about in the, in the community as to whether you should bring your kids to these events or not. Yeah. And, you know, where I stand on it is don't bring them if you know they can't handle it. Right. You know, because I, I was one of those kids at one point where, like, I went to Knott's in 2008 when I when I first was, like, getting into it. Lasted, like, two hours and left. You know, yeah. so it wasn't for me. It wasn't until, like, 2011 when I got a little bit older where I was like, okay, let's go to another haunt. Let's see what it's like. And from there, I've just been addicted and had a, a good time, you know? Yeah. So, no, I, I get what you're saying, man. I don't, I don't think, I mean, that's your job. You're getting paid to do what you're supposed to do. Right. And you're executing it freaking phenomenally because, you know, you have guests like me that will stand there and just enjoy the show. Yeah. Yeah. Like our mentality was if I'm not giving your kids nightmares, I'm not doing my job. Right. You know, I got, I had a dad get in my face because I literally just like, I saw the kid was scared. He was like 12, I think, or something like that. And I, I, I just chased him around his dad twice. Like, just kind of like, you know, I wasn't even touching him. I was just, just chased him. And then I, I was going to walk away and the dad just got into me got into me so i broke character because it, it, it pissed me off yeah i know i broke character and i go hey i go can i see your ticket and you know and he was like going back and forth oh why why do you want to see my ticket i go i just want to see your ticket let me see your ticket and he showed and i pointed it out i go oh not recommended for kids under 13 <laughs> look at that and i gave it back to him and walked away <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> this is your i'm just kind of telling you yeah. this is your fault dude yeah yeah you know? yeah no, deal with I, it <laughs> i 100 percent agree man i mean if you if you can't handle the event if you if you're forcing your kids to go to something they don't want to it's just a big no-no um right. but i i do enjoy hearing a lot of those funny stories man i mean i i, I that's one of my favorite things hearing uh, about just haunts in general, just to see what they've done. What what was the funniest thing you had a guest uh, do while you were working there? Whether it be like spill a beer, maybe piss their pants. Like, what, what's something funny you remember? I've had somebody piss their pants. Um, I've had a couple women grab my thing. Nice. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if that was funny, but <laughs> it wasn't funny for you. I'll say that. Yeah. And uh, you know, um, it's got her number. It's fine. Um, <laughs> But it, it was like, it's, 
the funniest thing, oh, man, so much stuff happens. I don't know. I'd have to really think about that one. Yeah, no, it, it, I mean, you, you've had, how long, how long were you at scary farm for, by the way? Um, I was, I was there from 96 to 2006, so 10 years. 10 years. Um, and then I went back to, I went back in 15. 15. So 11, 11 years. 11 years. Total. So you, the first five you had your running partner, you guys were the twins. The, the What was it? The, the bone twins? Bone brothers. Yeah. Bone brothers, twins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What, so we, we get through that phase, you know, he ends up leaving. What happens next for you after that? So we, um, so we both got offered makeup. Right. And um, that was where the big transition happened. So we got offered makeup and that was where we were like, all right, cool. We're still going to be partners, but we're no longer twins. Right. We, we broke the twins and we're like, you create your character, I'll create mine. So that's when I developed Lucky, which was um, the little... Uh, uh, leprechaun elf character. I completely changed his demeanor. Um, I ran with that character for about two years, maybe a year and a half, about two years, yeah. two seasons, as I should say. And um, I ran him, I ran with him off and on. And he was more, uh, his, that character was more really energetic, bubbly, didn't stop, was just all over the place. Um, and he didn't talk much. I didn't want him to, to be a speaking character. So um, I just wanted him to be goofy and, right. uh, you know, and like kind of just kind of like a leprechaun would be, you know, yeah. uh, an evil one. He, his face was really uh, designed after the leprechaun. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, I, that was the biggest inspiration. Little did I know the makeup artist was going to pretty much sculpt it exactly. But what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so he was it was he was that he had some very fringy costume and um so i ran with that and my partner was some some other um they called him sweet cheeks and he was uh something you know some other character and so he and i ran together and then he left um and i ran with lucky for another season um and then after that i got offered to uh, do an, my own character which was sculpt design sculpt everything um and then that's where ghost rider was um born ghost I, rider man i mean you have <laughs> you have the honor of being named after one of them uh, and, and it's one of the most famous attractions there but also yep. one of the fucking coolest marvel characters ever <laughs> yep. Yep. yeah so i wanted to um I, my girlfriend at the time uh we developed a backstory for him you know before the the design aspect of it and um he basically his story was he was part of the mine um and the mine during the mine explosion he got caught in the explosion right. so it completely destroyed his face um and his whole purpose after that was to find the people responsible for blowing up the mine with him in it so it was he's he's kind of a revenge character so he he would go out and he would hunt people, you know, right. um, and stalk people. Um, and that was his, uh, he was very intimidating. And um, he just was just there for like, just brutality. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I, uh, you know, when people tell me a lot of the times of their backstories in my head, I'm already thinking of like how you can develop that into a film. Like, right. it, you know, I just, I, I, I am such a visual person when it comes to like, when people explain things to me that I'm already thinking like, how do you develop this into a film? Like how cool would that look on screen? Right. Um, so just, just thinking about it right now, just kind of like a whole story beyond that and like a cool, like revenge story, you know, just, just essentially like ghost Rider is and the mm -hmm. comics, you know, he, that's what he is, the spirit of vengeance. So exactly. Um, and that's exactly, awesome. that's exactly what I did. I, I took that character, um, you know, a year, a few years back and I created a web series of them. You know, off of you got a web whole, series of it, huh? I have I have a script written. You okay. Know, of uh, and I never got around to making it because right. I just got to the point of like, eh, I'm not really into being the director and doing all that stuff. So I just stuck to writing, and so yeah, I wrote a I wrote a ten episode web series based around this character. I mean, I'm a little interested in reading it now. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 once I get it flushed out more, yeah. I, I will more than happy to show it to you, man. Oh yeah, man. I will. I mean, I love, I'm a, I'm a huge reader too. I love reading when I, I'm, that's what, another thing with visuals. That's why I like comic books. Cause I get to visualize what I'm reading. So exactly. Um, 
Yeah, man. I mean, Ghost Rider obviously sounds like a freaking dope character. I really wish I could have been there back in the day to see that. Yeah. Um, so you, you run with Lucky for a couple years, then you then you do Ghost Rider. Um, you do your run with that. How does your run overall go with Ghost Rider? How did it react with the audience? How did how did people like it? It was good. Um, back then, the fan base wasn't really where it's at now. Right. Um, with social media, but um, you know, we I did get a lot of people sitting back and watching. Um, and that's the, the, the one thing I loved the most was when people would watch you scare and be entertained by it. Um, but it seemed like everybody dug it. Um, I, as far as I know, a lot of the other, you know, scare actors that we worked with, you know, dug the character. Um, I tried to get them evolved more and more throughout the years. Um, yeah. And then it just got to a point where I was like, I'm kind of done. Got to hang know? up the, yeah, hang up the old hat and coat and, yeah, I got, I started doing the mask company and I was like, I need to start focusing on this. And, um, you know, so that's when I called it quits in 2006. 2006 is the quit. So from there you go, you start doing masks now, right? Right. How does that, well, how, how does that, how does that, I mean, it, I'm assuming a lot of these are yours right here. These look yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So a lot of, um, so the one here, I don't know this one, where is he at? I don't know if you could put this guy. <laughs> so he is actually the updated version of Ghost Rider. Um, he was, I rushed him. So that's why he's completely torn. I broke the mold as I poured the first mask. <laughs> and I'm like, F this, I'm done. I'm not going to do it. So I'll deal with this one mask. But um, yeah, these are, a lot of these are mine. Um, mostly up on the top. I don't know if you can, no, you can't see the top row. No, I cannot see the top. Yeah, the whole top row. Right here, let me, let me adjust this real quick. There we Hi. go. Hello, microphone. The microphone. There you go. Um, so we have Pyro here. Yeah, there it is. We have the Goblin here. Nice. Uh, this is the. Uh, this was. Um, I forgot what his name was, but this is another. It's a little from. blurry on my end, but it looks like Chewbacca. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this is Lucifer. I don't know if you know, if you know Lucifer. I've heard of the this, name. Yeah. Okay, so he's the very first mask I did. Okay. And, um, and then, by the way. so a couple spawns up here. I love, I'm a huge uh, spawn fan. I love spawn. Yeah. I could, uh, I'll take a picture so that way you can. Yeah. Yeah. I'll so <clears throat> exactly. So, um, yeah, so I, I got into, so when I started the mask, I got the, 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 skull, the skeleton mask, right. it was very kind of flat and bland and it, it just looked white out in the streets. Right. Um, and I was like, you know, I need to, you know, doll it up. And I, I knew how to airbrush. So I airbrushed my mask. Well, that ended up leading into like me kind of touching everybody's masks up throughout the years. And then um, I, when I got asked to design Ghost Rider, that's when I realized I was able to sculpt and that I, the, um, the, the head makeup artist at the time, she took me under her wing, taught me all the tricks. And, um, you know, I sculpted Ghost Rider and, you know, he ended up becoming like just my prize because he came out so well. Right. And um, so like a few people were like, you should make, you should make some masks. And I'm like, all right, I'll check it out. Well, the guy um, for, for this one, uh, Lucifer, he asked, he's like, Hey, would you make me a mask? And I'm like, I've never done it, but let's do it. So we sculpted it. I made the mask. He loved it. And he is still to this day using that mask. Wow. Yeah. I mean, he has the mold. So I saw, I sold him the mold and he pulls and does his own thing, but like he is still, running that same character which is the biggest compliment anybody can ever give you Dude, i you know. know i mean just to see your work idolized at an event that has such a history yeah of, of being pretty much essentially one of the first major haunts in right. the world you know what i mean and to see that carry on to this day i mean just to see your kind of your legacy is still there in a way you know what i mean right so right. yeah it's cool because like i when i go visit you know i'll see these people I don't even know running around with the face that I sculpted right. and it's like, man, it's so cool, you know, yeah. but then you hear the stories. Cause I know some of the, you know, the makeup artists and some of the people and they're just like, Oh man, they just, they just broke your mold or your mold. So old it broke and blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. like, you know, and it got to a point I stopped, I literally stopped sculpting for them because it just got to a point to where it was more of a budget thing. And they right. started, they started having like their employees, 
you know, that they're paying like nine bucks an hour sculpting the masks. And yeah. it's just like, oh, well, unfortunately it shows. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but so, I mean, you have a lot of great sculpts up there, man. I mean, I'm seeing you. a lot of these masks and whatnot. And obviously, you know, a lot of people know who a lot of these characters are. I mean, you got the, you know, you know some Michael Myers over there, some, some hockey yeah. masks, Jason. So, yeah, the, the Michael Myers, the Jasons, so I didn't do any of those. Um, I wish I did. <laughs> but I do, I have a blank Rob Zombie Halloween part two. Oh, nice. The torn one here that I got from a buddy, I'm actually going to paint that. Nice. Um, he, well, he's trying to get me to, to get into the Michael Myers replication business. Right. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but um, I just, I just like to do character design, character development. And that's where Scott and I kind of, you know, uh, complement each other with the, you know, he does the character, the, the sliding development for the characters and then the design aspects that, you know, that I like to do when it comes to do actual like backstories and uh, costuming and face design. Uh, you know, that's where, that's where we kind of complement each other. And that's why we've been, we're starting to work together a little bit more. Right. Uh, but yeah, so I, I just, I started doing the mask thing and it kind of started taking off and taking off, it got, yeah. to, got to a point where I was like, all right, well, I need to make a company and um, start pushing product out, you know, yeah. <clears throat> which was cool. And we got a lot of clients, mostly in the Midwest and the East coast uh, who I still talk to this day and they still request faces and it's like, I don't do them anymore. Uh, you know? yeah. And for, and for the ones that I'm like super close with, I'll do one-offs here and there, right. you know, I did a couple skull masks last year for a buddy of mine, um, out in, uh, Milwaukee. So it, you know, it varies which, just to one of the, depending on the time, huh? It does, man. Cause once yeah. I got into visual effects, like it, that, that is just like a time sucking, life I, sucking industry. <laughs> just to give you guys a little, a little bit of a backstory. I met Jeremy first time ever, uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago at, uh, at Han X. And, um, we, we, I remember Scott was telling me, Oh yeah, this is my buddy, Jeremy. Uh, you know, you might want to ever get him on the show one day. So it's, this podcast has been literally in the works for a year and a half. Jeremy is Jeremy and I, we both have busy schedules. So it was just a matter of trying to line align with the stars. And today we actually got to do it. So yeah. 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 It's been, yeah. This whole, I mean, I wanted last week, I definitely wanted to do it, man. But like, Hey, <laughs> we're here in the now. We're, we're here. doing it, and so super excited. You go on doing sculpts for a little bit. Um, how long have you done? How how long did you do that for until you kind of were slowly fading away from that? Well, that actually it just abruptly stopped. Right. Um, and I tried to do. It. So what happened was we were in like the midst of of in the middle of like trying to prepare for Trans World. Right. It's going to be our first Trans World, and. Um, so I was in the process of trying to take my designs from uh, traditional clay sculptures to doing them in computer right. with um, a program called ZBrush. And uh, so I looked into like uh, some like training you know videos, and then I came across the school Nomen, and um, I went there. I took uh, I went to there to go buy the DVD, and they were like, "Hey, are you interested in taking a tour?" And I'm like, "Yeah, why not?" So I took a tour of the school. And, uh, you know, and then that kind of went, you know, went and I went home, started doing my thing, preparing. And literally four months later, we're like, just, just mass production, boom, trying to get this, these masks done. I get a call from the school and they're like, hey, uh, so we want to accept you into the school. And I'm like, I they're all, are you still interested? I go, I never was. <laughs> and they're like, well, you came and you did a tour and, you know, we got your information and we looked on your, at the time, it was MySpace, you know, and we saw some of your designs. So like, would you send us some of your artwork? And, you know, I'm like, sure, why not? I sent them masks. I sent them some sketches. And I'm like, okay, whatever, go away. And um, <laughs> onward, <laughs> onward yeah. next. And then, um, yeah, so fast paced, you know, fast forward, they were like, okay, well, hey, you're, they want to accept you into the school. And at the time, like being accepted into that school was pretty big. Right. So my, I talked to my girlfriend at the time, who was now my wife. And I'm like, look, this is what's happening. What do you think? She's like, do it. And I'm like, dude, what about Jay Lee? What about the masks? Like we have trans world. She's like, let's just see what goes. Let's just see where it goes. And I'm like, all right, cool. So anyways, uh, I go through the process and then they were like, okay, cool. You know, we, we accepted you. Let's go through financial aid. I'm like, that's where it's going to go wrong. <laughs> right there. Right there. It's always when the money comes about. Yeah. So we go through that process. And I said, all right, cool. You're good. 
like you're going to start in june this was literally three weeks from where we were we were at like right. like oh we're gonna you know i'm like so in three weeks my life is completely changing i'm going from running a business to going to school and there was half of me that was like i really want to do this you know because i don't know where this could take me right um do i struggle with the business and really like just kind of break even throughout god knows how long right. um or do i you know try to take this path for a couple of years and see where it goes um and that's what i did so i tried to do the business simultaneously while going to school and it just wasn't working and that's where scott came in we brought we took everything to his garage and he helped me fulfill orders you know and all that and it just got to a point where i'm like dude i i can't have you do everything and me not being able to help out and i just can't keep up with the orders like we we gotta kind of cut cut it right so i stopped the masks and focused full-time on school and you know 15 years later i'm here I am. And it's are. changed, changed my life completely. And not just in, um, you know, not just, uh, you know, financially, it changed my life artistically. Right. I learned so much throughout the years, you know, from filmmaking, character design, story, everything, you know, and uh, I, I wouldn't change it at all. So now you're in the, the beautiful world, one of my favorite worlds of, of visual effects. Um, are you allowed to say stuff you've worked on in the past? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What's a little bit of a resume so people kind of get a, get an idea of what you've worked on in the past? Oh my gosh, the big list. It's mostly commercials. Right. Um, a lot of car commercials. Um, uh, a few game trailers. Um, but uh, film wise, I worked on Piranha 3D, Men in Black, Black Three, uh, Argo, Hugo. Um, my God. Uh, fat list. There's more. I know there's more. I, I, I did after work on a Hugo, I kind of focused on more. I enjoyed, I enjoyed working at smaller studios. Right. And so I started to focus more on commercial stuff. Okay. And um, only because it lets you be a part of the whole process and not right. just, you know, part of like just focusing on one thing. My specialty was lighting and compositing, but I enjoyed doing the whole process for, you know, a, a project. Right. And um, so when I worked on Hugo, I literally was lighting one shot for three months. Wow. And, you know, thankfully it was, for me, it was the last shot. Right. You know, if you remember that movie, the last shot when you're um, pushing into the robot. Right. That, that whole room the robot's in, that's all my work. Nice. Yeah, so it's you know it's stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but like it's so grueling to just work on the same thing for three months as opposed to working on a commercial that could potentially have like thirty shots, and you're working on the whole, you're working through the whole process on all those well a good majority of those shots. Right. So um, that was always my uh, you know where my forte because film just like it's like beating a dead horse, man. Right. And then they work you to death, you know, half the time they don't give you credit, yeah. <laughs> you know, not to get into the negative side of it, but yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, it has, I got worked on lost the TV show, the nice. uh, show lost the last season. Um, that was actually my first job on lost on huh? the no, last no, season. I, I take that back. That was my second job in the okay. industry. I worked on lost at yeah. the last season, season six. So basically all the visual effects in that season, um, I got to work on. That's awesome, dude. I mean, yes. see, I, 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 I am a huge film buff. I, I love watching and, and, and seeing behind the scenes of how everything is made. Um, I, I'm fortunate enough to have my cousin who actually lives out in Burbank. Uh, he works on shows such as uh, stuff he's done in the past is uh, like Reno 911. Okay. Uh, he, he was also he does uh, sound. So, oh, dope. so Reno 911, he's done, uh, Sabrina Teenage Witch, Bones, he did that for like the majority of its run, uh, and now he's doing uh, Blackish. Um, okay. So I, I've, I've always just been, even before meeting him, I've just always been growing up, just love watching films and just love the behind the scenes, whether it's CGI or whatever. Like I follow certain pages on Instagram that will show you before CGI and after CGI and yeah. visual effects and whatnot, so... I'm a huge nerd for all that stuff. I right, love right. it so much. And it's just, it's always been a passion of mine just to, to do filmmaking and stuff and, and just to create. 
Um, yeah, it's it's changed, man, drastically within the last year. Yeah. So drastically. Like I've had to force myself to learn Unreal and learning the new production process. I it's like it's constant. Was it due evolving. to COVID that it changed so much? Well, a good majority of it will push it to where it's at now. Yeah. Yeah. Because now they don't use green screen anymore. Now they, they just use LED lights to you know the stage. I've, and, I've seen that. Like for the behind the scenes of the Mandalorian, it was just a big mm-hmm. LED screen. Yeah. And they were just showing what basically giving the idea of the actor, like this is what's gonna be in the background right here. This is what you're gonna see on well, screen. I mean, that's exactly yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. It's yeah, yeah. like there's no there's no post processing anymore, you know. It's like what what what's they they put it on the LED panels. I mean it's all real time. Right. It's unbelievable what what they're doing with that stuff. Yeah. I just worked on a, a couple of shows that are using that technique and I had to simultaneously do my 3D stuff with uh, an Unreal artist. And it was just like, oh, I updated this. Here's your assets. And it's like, oh, okay, well, here, I, I did this. You know, here's your assets. Like, right. It kind of, you know, for a, a good majority of the of the production, it, it added more work. Right. But towards when it came to filming and the post part of it, right. it takes work away. So it just kind of shuffles it to the beginning, you know, to the pre-production aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 remarkable the, the stuff they're doing now. Yeah, I mean, I, I even heard for uh, the 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 newest Thor movie too. They were doing the same thing they were doing with Mandalorian was the whole <laughs> LED screens and stuff. So it's cool to see that technology every every year is evolving. Even yeah. every couple months, I mean, you're seeing either like a new phone come out, like new computers, like new software, like anything to enhance what you can do. It, like it because like. Back in the day, you couldn't do nearly as much as you can do with computers now. Like, you can practically make a whole film that is at the quality of filmmaking that you see in theaters from your computer now. Yep. It's nuts. You can do it all, most of it with freaking After Effects and, and Final Cut and, and yeah. Adobe Premiere and all that, dude. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's nuts. You don't even need a, a camera. No. Really. You can just use your iPad or your phone. Yeah. Feed that, feed that into Unreal, and bam, you're doing... You yeah, know, true camera movements. They did that one movie, uh, I, I think it was called Unsane. It was all shot yeah. on a phone. Yep. Yeah. The that, iPhone. That, that's nuts right there. Like that, that mm-hmm. That's where it's coming to, where people are trying to prove, like, this is how good the cameras are on these phones now. Yeah, there's a guy um, on YouTube. He did, um, he took a couple sequences from Nightmare on Elm Street and recreated them, just filming it with the iPhone 12. Wow. Either 11 or 12, one of those. And it is like, minus the acting aspect of it it is in the makeup it is uh like unbelievably shot one to one if not make, better yeah yeah it, it, it was it's it's amazing the way they did that i was like oh i was blown away yeah man. <laughs> I mean, that's really cool though so uh during the pandemic most of the pandemic have you been working from home because yes yeah yeah so uh because i know a lot of the industry was working from home from what i would read and, and hear about um yeah it's been what uh, it's basically what I've been trying to do for the past since I moved up here to NorCal. Right. It's it, I've been trying to work from home for the past five years, and I would get a job here or there, but this year I was like, you know, they they sent us home, and we've been home since. Right. And um, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take advantage, and I'm going to work for the studios I used to work for. I would get hit up, and that's how I worked for the. I did these two other shows. I worked for CBS for five months. Right. You know, I was, I was working like a hundred hours a week, but I was just, it was, I was able to do it. From the and the comfort like, of your not? home too at that, you know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. You, know, you have so. your own private restrooms. You got your own little break <laughs> private area. You know what I mean? You got a little, yeah. you got your own kitchen, you know? Yeah. All to yourself, it's nice. You know what I mean? You and your family. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, now they're like calling us back to work. Like, <laughs> they're like, oh, come on. I'm just Makes, no <laughs> uh, Makes no man. sense. Makes no sense. So. I, I, I didn't forget about 2015. I want to talk a little bit about your return for 2015. Uh, right. Talk to us about how that was, man. I mean, uh, after all these years, you, you come back. It, it's nearly 10 years now uh, again, and you yeah. make your return 2015. Uh, what did you just do? One night? Did you do a, uh, the whole event? What, what did you do? Um, I did probably – Scott's probably going to kill me. I don't remember. <laughs> Um, he got me on my, my cousin ended up getting a job there and I was like, you know what? I want to work, you know? And so I asked Scott and he got me in. Um, I worked probably, I want to say half, 
he'll be the one that he's probably gonna kill me because he's like, no, you didn't. But okay, you'll get a you'll get a text when this gets released. Like, no, you didn't. <laughs> exactly. It was um, I so when I agreed to work, I I agreed to work on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Right. So I, and I go, look, I'll give you these days. He's like, all right, cool. And that was because of the job I had at the time, um, totally allowed me. They were like, yeah, you know, Fridays take your half day, go do your thing, cool. Well, that job ended abruptly wow. and I got cut and then picked up on another job like right away, right. but that job was farther. So I was going from Torrance to Buena Park. And right. then the other job was in Santa Monica to Buena Park, which is, you, if you know, the drives, Yeah, yeah. that's just like, adds yeah. another like that's 40 minutes. That's Los Angeles, dude. Yeah. So it, it made it extremely difficult to get into knots. So I told him, I go, okay, look, I'm going to do my best to get there Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So that was probably halfway through. And then I, I was lucky to even do Saturdays and, and Sundays. I pretty much only did like Sundays. Right. So it kind of, you know, I, it kind of disappointed Scott and it disappointed me, but I just, you know, I had work comes first. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in my opinion, that's the reason why I stopped doing it was like, I need to focus on getting a career. Yeah. So, um, and so like when I going into it though, I wanted to take Ghost Rider and kind of make Ghost Rider 2.0. Still kind of the same backstory, but improve the costume. So, um, <clears throat> to be kind of I, more today to, with today's event and everything. Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. But I wanted to, you know, wear a mask. I right. didn't want, you know, obviously, they weren't going to offer me makeup. And I wasn't, I wouldn't have taken it even if it did just because the makeup's so terrible now. Um, right. <laughs> and I, um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to make a mask, but the limited amount of time I had to make a mask uh, and my resources were kind of dwindled to nothing. I had to really figure out a way to do it. Um, I rushed it. Right. I, the sculpt, the sculpt was superb. It was the, it was everything after that was kind of rushed the paint job. Um, it, I was only able to get one pull of the mask because the mask, the, the, the mold broke. Um, and it was just a complete hack job. Um, so when I so when I went out there, I was I was I ha, I kind of psyched myself out because I was just like I don't I'm not happy with the mask, right? You know I was happy with the costume, you know, and I I got these like I got guns. I wanted him to be like a gunslinger, so I got these fake guns. I got the holster. I I totally cowboyed it up. Nice, <laughs> and it looked pretty cool, you right. know. And I and um, so I went out there, and man, the first night, I was by myself because <laughs> <laughs> I was like I knew nobody. Right. Um, I was introduced to a few people. Um, <clears throat> the only person I knew the first, you know, couple nights was Scott, and then <clears throat> so I kind of felt out of place. Right. And then with the uh, with the changes that I saw with you know the way they were running the park and the the rules that we had to follow, I was like kind of nervous of doing anything. And then to top it off, I didn't want to hurt myself because I was I'm older. I was out of shape. And I didn't prepare myself properly. Right. So uh, sliding was a little bit difficult at the time, but I, I was able to do it, you know. So, um, but I ended up, you know, finding my groove. Um, I ended up getting, you know, getting to know some of the guys and they you know, invited me to come do the scares up in the front. And, you know, I had a great time Dude, for, the, for the time I was there. That's awesome, man. So with all that being said, uh, if the opportunity ever arises, would you would you bring it back one last time to kind of finish it, or was 2015 that one last time? No, I would, I would, because now I'm in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually in really good shape. I, I had my kids, and I'm like, oh man, I got to get in shape because these guys are gonna kill me. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I want to. I would love to go back. I don't know if I would go back to knots. Right. Um, and if I did go back to knots, I would change my character. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be Ghost Rider. I would do something completely different. Um, but I do, I would like to work someplace. Um, I don't know. I, there's a few haunts up here um, that I've, I've met the owners, but I had, and they've asked if I'd be interested. And I was like, eh, I don't know. You know, yeah. we'll see. I like to enjoy the season. Yeah. I like to go to the events. And, Cause as um, you get older, you just kind of like to appreciate it for what it is. You know, you've like, you've already cemented your legacy into it. Now you're just trying to see the next generation do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, and I help out you know, the next generation. That's, that's kind of like yeah. where I, where I want to be. That's where, where Scott and I are coming in. We want to be able to like, you know, help these, these young guys 
kind of develop the characters and do things the right way. Teach them, you know, the things knows? that we did wrong. Maybe one day your kids will follow in your footsteps, man, and be the next big thing out in the haunt world. I know, maybe. I know a lot of people in the haunt in, in the haunt world. They they want their kids to do that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, like, whatever you, path they choose, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, you stay away from entertainment. Stay away. From, <laughs> I don't want you doing any of that. You know, I want you guys to make money. <laughs> go the go the nurse route. That's the best route. Trust me. Exactly. There you exactly. go. There you go. Yeah. So it's um. Awesome, but yeah, man. I would love to. Um. Yeah. I've I've tried to I've kind of threw it out there to Scott to try and get me over into Dark Harbor for a night. So yeah. maybe hey. Scott could do your work, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome, man. I mean, because I, I I for sure after talking with you more and getting to know you and, and your characters would love to see it just once, you know, yeah. uh, before you, you hang it up for good. Um, yeah. But it's good to see things are going your way now, and that you that you you have a family, you, you're you're settled down, you, you have your good, you have a you have a job that's that's get, keeping you going, and um, just good that you can now look back and just reminisce and just enjoy now. Yeah. So that's always yeah. that's always the best part, especially like with us when we go to Not Scary Farm, we'll get the season pass and we'll just sit there for nights, not even film, we'll just enjoy it, you know? Because oh yeah, it's the memories that you're gonna remember, you know. So, yeah. um, and I'll get this, I'll get the season pass this year. Yeah. You know, I always do. I get it every year because, you know, you never know. Yeah. yeah. I'll go out there, take a, do a turnaround trip, just go out there, hang out, come back. Come back. Yeah. yeah. I still love it, man. I still love Ghost Town. We went there, um, we were down SoCal a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And we went, we went to Knott's Berry Farm and um, we were pretty much like the last people to leave the park. Right. And we walked through Ghost Town. There's nobody there. It's dark. And I'm like, it, it just so much nostalgia, yeah. you know, and just like it, it, you got, you just kind of get, you get chills, you get emotional, you know, like so many years and so much sweat and blood and tears and yeah. pain and happiness and everything just kind of like, you know, flows through you after yeah. working so many years in that place. And, you know, I loved it. Like I told my wife and my friends, I'm like, you guys go, I'm going to go stroll around, you know, and I'll I see just the walked. old spots and yeah. Yeah. So many stories, man. You yeah. Know? It's man. like, so yeah, yeah. you got to get Scott and I on here. Oh that'll man. Be, that'll be an entertaining one right there. Then, then I'm going to hear from Scott. <laughs> why do you always want me on your damn podcast? I'm like, people want you to do it with them. That's why exactly, Scott. Exactly. You stupid little <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want cursing on here, no, so I won't. No, it's, 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 it's horror, man. That's, that's the horror world all about, man. Exactly. You ever seen yeah. a Rob Zombie film? Come on. <laughs> I know, man. Um, well, Jeremy, it's been an absolute pleasure to to learn more about you, to get the to get to, for people to get to know about you, man. I mean, I, I'm glad we got to finally do this, and I'm glad you. Uh, I'm thankful that you took a little bit of time off to to have time to do this, and and. Uh, like I always say to a lot of my other guests, you're welcome back anytime, man. So thanks, thank man. You. Yeah, yeah, I would love to sit and just talk movies with you, man. Dude. Like I see you, I see you shoot the shit, and I'm like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, dude, you know what? Uh, we gotta hit up Scott. Whether it's mindless horror or shoot the shit, I don't care. We'll do it. Like, yeah, yeah, it would I mean, be good. I just when I think I got everything out of Scott, like we'll be just, uh, just hanging out, no cameras or anything. Oh yeah, I, I did this. Oh yeah, I did this. Oh, I trained that person. I'm like. So Why I'm barely, not I'm barely on one page out of a whole book of Scott that I've gotten out of you in podcasts, huh? I'm I'm telling you, man. You you, you get Scott, myself, a couple other guys, man, and we just talk ghost town. You can get hours out of dude, us, dude. I, 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 <laughs> my dream one day is to do a, a like a legends panel, just to kind that would of be dope. just have everyone come out in person. Yeah. Just, you know, have a good time, multiple cameras, and, and just have a good time and just reminisce. Yep, even, if it, even if we go for, like, three, four, five hours, like, you can easily cut that down to a couple parts, so. Of course, of um, course. Fun time. You know what? We got to maybe make it happen one day. We'll see. Yeah, we we'll will. See what's That'd up. be yeah, great. Yeah. Um, with all that being said, uh, do you have any social media anyone can follow you on or, or just they want to? see what your work's like or anything um i'm not on social media okay. <laughs> i got off uh, during the pandemic right uh too depressing yeah yeah but um Definitely. yeah i have a, actually i do have instagram for my company okay. um j lee entertainment j-e-h-l-e-i-e-n-t um they can follow me there okay um and uh i just post masks and character design 
sometimes some CG stuff, but uh, yeah. I, I don't post too often. But yeah, um, and then I have my Jeremy Lee uh, uh, lei dot com, my website, and you can see work there. So awesome. Yeah, well, man. Jeremy, it's been an absolute pleasure, like I said, and uh, we're definitely gonna have to do this again sometime. Yeah, thank wait, you man. for thank you for having me on. Finally, man. It's, hey, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I watch you every week, dude. And dude, it's like, that that means a lot, man. I appreciate. I that. do. That's I, awesome. I I have mad respect for what you're doing. Um, and I, I just think it's the coolest thing that you're bringing everybody on. You're talking about their, their, their everything. And it's, it's amazing. So Thank keep you, it man. up, dude. Yeah, keep it up. I, I appreciate it. I have, I, like I said, I have a good time doing it and I get to meet new people and, and just have a, a blast doing it. So, yeah. um, it's not a job for me. This is, this is a, this is a fun hobby that I just love doing. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. so I, I have a lot of fun and I get, like I said, I get to meet a lot of people. So a lot of fun. But, cool, man. Yeah, we'll do this again sometime. We'll, we'll schedule something. I'll hit up Scott. He'll probably yell at me, but it's okay because I'm used to it by this point. <laughs> uh, screw him. He's a baby. <laughs> With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. If you're listening on Spotify or any of the other streaming platforms, then uh, go ahead and hit that follow button. But if you're listening here on YouTube and watching the video with us, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button with that bell notification to be aware every time we put up a new video. Also, hit that like button. It shows us that uh, we're doing our job to entertain you guys because that's all we want to do is just entertain you guys for a few hours a day and just keep your mind off the bullshit that's going on in the world. <laughs> uh, but until then, we'll see you guys next week for another episode of the Miles 4 Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony. My guest is Jeremy. We'll see you guys soon. Hey, guys. You're moving into a